There's a shooting war in Oakland, a deadly battle for turf between drug dealers, police, and citizens. The dealers shoot first and don't even bother to ask questions later. As Tom DeRees reports, the savagery in Oakland makes TV Vice seem almost nice. For all its reputation, Miami this year has fewer murders for its size than Oakland, and Miami has nowhere near the number of drug-related killings. Oakland is in the midst of a violent battle over control of the drug trade. Police say that drugs have been responsible for 41 murders already this year. Miami police report only 16 drug-related killings so far. The Oakland totals as of this week, 98 homicides, 42% of them drug-related. Last year at this point, there had been more murders in Oakland, 106, but only 27% involved drugs. Oakland homicide detectives say the new breed of crack dealer is younger and often armed with an automatic weapon. Lieutenant James Hahn says the dealers are casual about killing to protect their business. Because of the younger age of these people, he doesn't go out and just break an arm. And now it's just you, they go out and they commit a murder. There is no attempt to collect on the debt anymore. It's, a, it's just a punishment for failure to pay. This funeral last year might have been the beginning of the trouble. Felix Mitchell was king of Oakland's drug trade, and he was killed in prison. Three other Oakland drug lords also went to jail. The result was a vacuum in the drug business. Lieutenant Hahn. What we have is a, an oversupply, so to speak, and uh, easy access to an awful lot of people who want to get into the drug trade for the quick profits. Oakland police are quick to say that the drugs fought over here are often consumed in the more exclusive parts of the Bay Area. In Oakland, Tom DeVries... Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy, Pop a Lot. Mob ties. We on our way to Cali with it. Oakland. Shout out to everybody in Oakland. Need y'all in the comment box below. Rebel what part of the city y'all from. But this is going to have a lot or it's almost going to culminate at the Acorn Projects. Anybody from Acorn, y'all get in the comment box. We want to know what's going on around there. We know they tear down the projects everywhere. Is Acorn still standing? Now, today we are going to be covering a guy by the name of Anthony Flowers. But the neighborhood knows him as Ant. And uh, this story is going to take place pretty much circa the late 80s to the late 90s. And it's almost going to be the aftermath of um, or a drug vacuum. A lot of times what they say once a big kingpin is taken off the streets. It's usually a power struggle. And it seems like or by the media accounts, that's what they labeled this. And they would call this the second Oakland drug war, with the first being the one between Felix Mitchell and Mikey Moore. Um, so that one is well documented. Um, not sure how many people were wounded or lost their lives between that, but by all accounts, they said that one was not even fueled by anything personal. It was all around the sale or the lucrative sale of narcotics. That just goes to show you, I never stress enough how dangerous or how much money was involved in the game, especially in the 80s, especially in the 80s, and then moving into the 90s. So people were willing to die and willing to kill over something that pretty much made them a millionaire six months. You got to imagine. So now, like I said, that is going to culminate in the second drug war in Oakland. And by all accounts, is the, the information is kind of mixed. So on one hand, I saw where they said Anthony Ant Flowers was a member of an organization that was under Little D. And... When Little D was arrested, it was an incident at a barbecue in 1989 that led to a split of the groups. And it led to Anthony Ant Flowers joining another organization that we're going to talk on in a little bit that would go on to clash with the rival Little D organization. And... 
it, it's it's pretty deep. So, like we talked a little bit about Felix Mitchell in the first drug war, and this is going to be pretty much the second one. And I talked about when the power struggle for when a big a kingpin is convicted. So, according to the indictment, they're going to say that, like I said, Little D was indicted. And his organization was headed by another gentleman after he was in jail by the name of Timothy Blewett, who would end up being sentenced to 35 years. But that's going to be down the line. And he is going to be one of the main people that or actually he's going to be the they're going to say he was the second in command when Little D was free. So he was going to be the person that Anthony Flowers was pretty much going up against. And Anthony Flowers had a lot of aligned himself with a set of brothers called the Lacey brothers who were treacherous pretty much in their own right. Um, I've seen, and, and this is just speaking on the Lacey brothers cause they, it some, like I said, the information is jumbled and mixed up. Some places you read, they say they, they were one faction and then some places you read, they just allied themselves during this 1989 drug war that that it was a two year drug war where they're going to say 18 members of the two gangs or innocent bystanders was were killed in gunfights and drive by shootings in just that two years alone. So it was a bloody time in Oakland in the late 80s going into the 90s. And by all accounts, yeah, the, the Lacey brothers were almost as treacherous as anybody else that we covered on Mob Ties because I seen where they had one brother, Emmanuel Lacey, where he was charged with um, pretty much a shooting, but a witness in the case was murdered. That murder was unsolved. And he ended up copping out to a manslaughter. And I think he did eight years. And they say he was going to be released right around the time of the mid 90s and presumed business. And he would end up being indicted. And I saw the story just take full turns, always like a movie. I saw where they found him and arrested him. He was scalping tickets outside of Colorado Rockies game in Denver. So that should just go to show how from drug kingpin to his just all levels pretty much of a legal business, but to just go to show you the run that it was on. And they gonna say that, um, really that everything came to a culmination, really starting in 1988, when the two gangs went to war over the rights to sell drugs in the Acorn housing projects of Oakland. So I can't even imagine the level of violence that was attributed to trying to, because that's the equivalent of having a, a Carter in New Jack City, uh, Cabrini Green when Chicago was fully fully running. Like the some of these Queens Bridge, like some of these projects are blocks long and very very lucrative, especially when drugs were like flowing through the community like it wasn't anything it's almost like you every person was a potential customer but the the gang war would culminate with Ant Flowers receiving 28 years after he would be indicted on drug charges so I didn't see where any where it was a, like a third drug war in Oakland. I did see where it was a spike in shootings. Anybody in Oakland right now, y'all tap in. One thing about Oakland that I, I know based on a lot of people from Oakland speaking, there's no gangs in Oakland. So it's not like these two gangs were fighting. They were more like organizations, but there are no like different sets of gangs in Oakland. So a lot of it, I think, has to be money-based if it's not these gangs battling. But anybody in Oakland, y'all tap in, man. Y'all know we trying to find out what's going on out there. It's your boy Popular. Y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter. Y'all hit the bell under this video if y'all want to be notified when this real trail spill shit is dropping. I'm going to be back. Y'all know what it is. It's the mob. 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 Ties.